Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you are a .NET developer who is curious about large language models and smart automated agents, then you are in the right place. Today we are diving deep into Microsoft's semantic kernel to build our very own AI agent from scratch. I'll cut through the theoretical part and get straight to the practical steps, showing you how to use this powerful tool to create some truly amazing apps. So grab your coffee and let's get started. Before we write any code, let's break down what semantic kernel really is. It's hard, it's an open source SDK designed to help you orchestrate and coordinate large language models between your .NET applications. Think of it as a conductor for an orchestrate of AI skills. The real magic is in its core components. First, for example, you have plugins. These are the individual skills or capabilities you give your AI agent. A plugin can be a piece of native C-sharp code you write, like a function to send an email or query a database, or it can be a semantic skill defined by a natural language prompt. This mix and match approach is incredibly powerful. Then we have planners, which act as the brain of the operation. Then you give the agent a goal, like summarize the top five articles about .NET and email them to my team, or planning product launch tasks. The planner analyzes this request, it looks at all the available plugins and dynamically creates a step-by-step -step plan to achieve the goal. It might be decided to first use a web search plugin, then a text summarization plugin, and finally an email plugin. This ability to reason and chain skills together is what elevates semantic kernel from a simple library to a true agent building framework. There are other components in semantic kernel as well, but these core pieces, plugins and planners are enough to get started and more than sufficient for us to create a powerful AI agent in .NET. Before we start coding, also it is important to understand where semantic kernel fits in the .NET AI ecosystem, especially with the introduction of Microsoft Extensions AI package. Let's clarify that in the next step. If you've been following the .NET AI ecosystem, you might be wondering how is semantic kernel different from the new Microsoft Extensions AI library. That's a great question. Uh, think of Microsoft Extensions AI library as the starting point. It gives you the basic tools for talking to different AI models, like a simple way to handle chat requests. On the other hand, semantic kernel is a bigger framework built on top of those tools. It gives you the features to make it act like an agent, the planning, the memory, the plugin system, you'll often use them together. If you look at this table, the comparison table, then as you can see, you'd use the basic extensions for simple tests, but for building a true agent, semantic kernel is the way to go. Now that we simply know the difference between semantic kernel and why we are using it, it's finally time to get our hands dirty and see it in action. Let's start building our first AI agent with .NET by using semantic kernel. Right, it's time to build for our prototype. We'll use GitHub models. It's a fantastic way to get started with powerful models like GPT-4 for free during development without needing a paint open AI K right away. You can use GitHub models for prot prototyping with AI models for free. To do this, we first need to have a GitHub personal access token, or PAT for short. Uh, as I'm showing you here in my browser, you'll go to your GitHub settings by clicking your user image, and then you will select the settings. And then on the bottom, you will see the developer settings. And then you will see personal access tokens, and when you create fine green tokens here, you can generate a new token by simply clicking this button. I've already done that, but when you do that, after you give access to your own settings, you can give a token name in here, like demo. And then the, the important thing is here that you need to set account permissions for your token. Here, when you scroll down, you will see the model section and you need to give access as read only and then you can click the generate token button and then you can confirm the dialog and then it will give you a token like this one so you can directly copy this one and once you've generated the token make sure to copy it right away because github won't show it to you again for security reasons 
So you can copy it for now and we can use it in our own demo. With our token ready, we can now create a new console application at the semantic kernel nuget packages and start building our first AI agent. Actually, I've already gone ahead and done this for you. I've created a console application called semantic kernel. Now we can let's take a look at what we have here. We can first open our CS Porsche file and as you can see that we have three semantic kernel nuget packages. We have the main Microsoft semantic kernel package. We Microsoft Semantic Kernel Agents AI, which is a release the package for now, and also we have Microsoft Semantic Kernel Connectors AI. We will use all of these three packages in our sample, and after having these packages, now actually we can start building our first AI agent. So we can open the program.cs file. I've already created for you. Here we first initialize semantic kernel and we are doing it inside the create kernel by using kernel.createBuilder and then we are creating an open AI options in here as you can see and we are passing endpoint as models.inference.ai.azure.com This is an Azure inference AI you can use in uh, while you are prototyping with GitHub models and then you want to use Azure own uh, API for the LLS. Also then we are passing the credentials and as you notice we are passing the GitHub personal access token in here and then we are using GPT 4.0 mini and passing the client in here. And after that actually after we create the kernel then we can use it the reusable uh, variable uh, inside our agents. We have three agents to show. Uh, first one is the email assistant agent actually and we are first importing two plugins and as you know that plugins are uh, basing functions so if we first open the email plugin for example and then you will see that the email plugin actually is a clause which has two kernel function in here and actually when we use kernel function attribute to these email scenes as the plugin methods so we can use it in our agents and as you can see we are passing the parameters to our send email methods and the LLMs clear enough to know that these are the parameters that they need to use in the model here we are basically simulating sending an email and also we have get email template method in here and then we have these two plugin methods that we can use and also we are using description attribute to set a description to related methods and therefore LMs can decide which method to use while processing a request from the users. We have two email subject by the arm from name parameters and we are basically simulating sending an email the get email template method as you can see there are three categories meeting follow-up and announcement and we are passing the related get email template according to that and we are importing related plugins with kernel.plugins.from type and passing the related the classes and then we are creating an email agent by using chat compilation agent class and we give some instructions like you're a professional email assistant and this is the instructions that you need to follow and we are passing the kernel creating an agent group chat and then we are using a chat message and create a user message and basically say send an email to this email address and then the LLM will understand the related email address and will see the plugin and pass the related email address to related method and then we are using invoke async methods and then LLM will turn us a response and then all of the and we can send a response to the user or to ourselves to see that the agent worked as expected. Also we have other uh, agents like task manager in this one. We still have two plugins but these are different plugins like task plugin and calendar plugin. Uh, classes in here we are still creating a new agent called task agent and in this one we basically give an instruction like create an organized task 
that priorities and deadlines, schedule work based on availability, and so on. And we are, as you can see, setting the plugins like plugin and click calendar plugin. And we are let the LLM plan the path for us. Also, for the third example, we have customer support pipeline, which can also demonstrate the planner component of the semantic kernel. Actually. And this one, as you can see, this is a larger agent than the others one, the others compare them. We have three agents in here, and we are actually making some operations one after the other, and actually we are planning them in here. We're creating a workflow code, and step by step, we make some assessment with the large language models. We have triage agent, technical agent, and follow up agent as an example. Now, we've already seen the plugins, but if you remember in the plugin again, we have kernel function attribute, which indicate that this method is a kernel function and it should be used by related agents. Now we have description to specify the related description for each kernel function and with the plugin itself. And if we go back to email assistant, you see you clearly see the instruction. We pass the kernel in here. And we are creating a new chat and add the chat message as the user role and pass the related email address with the all message and the LLM clear, uh, clear enough to understand the related things. And then we can run the application and see it in action. We can write the .NET run comment and then we can see the application in action. But before running the application, can see the email assistant again. We are passing the email. And as you notice, there is not the specific email address equals john.simit.com.com tag. That we are just passing the email, we are passing the subject, and then the GPT for all mini model. Understand related email, get the related subject from the text, and then fill the related uh, methods, the plugins actually, with related parameters. Here, if I plug in, you will see that there is a two email subject body and from name, and all of those are automatically play filled by the LAM model GPT4 or mini in our case, and then it will be automatically run. So let's run the application with the dot run command. And as you can see, it first sends project update to team, and as you can see, it set the subject as Q4 project status update. And set the email in the professional tone and leave some your name, position, and contact information placeholder state. And then our second agent is also worked, like intelligent task manager, it create task for product launch, well shaped, and even create the table for us. And in the set third the agent, we have customer support agent pipeline, which is the showing you the planner component of semantic kernel and we are having large capabilities like is more close to a real world example and you can see that there's a long amount of output in here consists of eight or more steps and there are even follow-up here there are success metrics and so on this is just a simple uh, demonstration for the AI agent. At that point, we have successfully built a working AI agent in .NET using semantic kernel. I have specifically created the console application to, you know, show you that easiest way possible. And then we've seen how to give an agent skills using plugins and how a planner can use those skills to achieve a goal and see a planner with a long task related output in here. And this is just the beginning, of course, so you can build on this by adding more complex skills, connecting to databases, giving it, you know, long-term memory and so much more. And actually, I want to know uh, what kind of agents are you think of building, so please let me know in the comments below. And if you find this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more .NET and AI content, and check out my Substack for more detailed articles and Thanks for watching.